I'm Per Peterson, a professor at the University of California, Berkeley. What's that? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's over. What? No. <laughs> My name is Per Peterson. I'm a professor at the University of California at Berkeley. And what is it that you work on? Topics related to nuclear energy and nuclear technologies. Recently, most of my work has been focused on the development of fluoride salt cooled high temperature reactor technology. And why is it that you work on that? Here at Berkeley, we think that there's a significant potential for molten salt reactor technology to play an important role in the future. There's many different approaches to designing reactors, but the molten salts have some specific characteristics that are very attractive. And by working with these salts, we think that we can develop reactors that can deliver heat at higher temperatures, have higher intrinsic safety, and be very compact and economic. I think that there's an idea in the general public that there's really only one type of nuclear reactor, or a nuclear reactor means something, which happens to be similar to Fukushima. Commercial reactors today dominantly are cooled by water, as were the first submarine reactors that were developed 60 years ago. There's alternative approaches for reactor designs that would use other coolants and would have different characteristics. The major categories of other coolants that have been studied include sodium and other liquid metals for fast spectrum reactors, helium for high temperature reactors, and then molten salts, both as fluid fuels where the fuel is dissolved in the salt, and more recently the work we've been doing is using the salts as coolants for high temperature reactors. Could you give me a recap of receiving the documents from Kirk? Well, back around 2004, a gentleman named Kirk Sorensen had contacted me my email and came to visit us at Berkeley because we'd been working on molten salt reactor technology and doing some of the early studies of how salts might be used to cool solid fuel reactors. And Kirk came into my office, he had a stack of CD-ROMs and on them was this compendium of reports from Oak Ridge National Laboratory from the molten salt reactor program of the 1950s through 1970s. And that was a treasure trove. There was an enormous amount of very useful data and information about that earlier program. And using that, we were able to accelerate our work in looking at how to develop fluoride salt cooled high temperature reactors, which is a variant of the earlier molten salt reactor technology. Now you were aware of the molten salt reactor experiment. Yes. Oh, there was of course knowledge about the fact that there had been this program to develop molten salt reactors. There were some journal articles that gave basic background. But the thing that was missing was this extensive compendium of 100 page reports that gave enormous amounts of detail about the work that had been accomplished and how they had developed the technology. And can you just describe the, the quality of the reports? What makes a good report? So the most important characteristic of these reports was the level of detail and the quality of writing, the number of figures and the amount of information. They were written to very high scientific standards. And the high scientific standard basically means that you report sufficient information that it would be feasible for others to repeat the experiment and to redo the work that you've done. And these reports actually are of sufficient quality that we can go back and do once again, or repeat once again, things that were initially studied back in the 1960s and 1970s for the molten salt reactor program. You mentioned what it means to the lab, but like, what, why do you personally pursue this? My personal interest in working in these areas comes from the desire to develop substantively better technologies to provide energy for humans in the future. And the technologies that we're working on really do have that potential to be revolutionary and game-changing if we can successfully d address the key technical issues that exist for implementing molten salt technology. It's such an importantly, it's such an important benefits that could come from this that it makes sense for us to invest substantial effort and that's one of the reasons that it's become a major focus for work in my laboratory here at UC Berkeley. Thank you very much. Good to finally meet you too.